Alright, this is lesson 8.5, graphing reciprocals of quadratic functions. Very sad day, right here in my voice. It's our last lesson of the year. Proud of you guys, you made it through. Uh, let's finish this thing up. So, in this lesson, we're going to use a lot of the same points we learned in, in 8.3 when you we were dealing with uh, linear functions. A couple of the big ones is wherever uh, the graph crosses the x-axis, whenever your original function crosses the x-axis, that's where we're going to have a vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is still going to be right on the, uh, the x-axis, it's going to be y equals 0. And then the second thing that's also going to be the same is uh, wherever your original function was at a height of a 1 or a negative 1, the same is going to happen for the reciprocal function. Okay? So, uh, let's get going here. The graphs of reciprocal quadratic functions fall into three possible scenarios. For each of the following three graphs, sketch the reciprocal functions. Okay. So, uh, let's uh, get going here. Example one, graphing a reciprocal function with no vertical asymptote. So you're going to see this one right here when I go and end up graphing, it's not going to have a vertical asymptote. And I think you'll see why that's uh, the case. So, uh, the first thing that I want you to do is we are always first going to graph whatever the original function is. So graph, first graph the function y equals negative x squared minus 1. So I've already taken the reciprocal of it. I want you to graph the original function. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to graph that. I'm just going to use red to graph this one. All right. So what do I see? I see I have a y-intercept at negative 1 right there. Okay. If you remember, y equals um, uh, a onto x minus p all squared plus q. That's the format that quadratics are in. That is going down 1. Since it has a negative out in front, that means it's going to open downwards. Since it's just a negative 1, then we just go over 1, down 1, draw that dot. Over 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4, so it follows the regular pattern. And then over 3, down 9 takes you to this point right here. All right, so that is what that function looks like. So, okay. So the next thing I want you to do is write another little note over here. Notice that the graph has no x-intercept. So you see how that graph does not cross this x-axis up here? Well, therefore, what can we say? There will be no vertical asymptote. So the only asymptote we're going to have is going to be the horizontal one. And so the horizontal one never changes. The horizontal asymptote, I'll write right here, is always at y equals 0. Okay. So I'll draw my horizontal asymptote. I will use uh, black right here. We have it one, two, three, four, keep it coming like so. Perfect. Okay. Now, if we want to graph the reciprocal of this function I've done in red, and so I'll do the reciprocal in blue right here, all you do is you just take every point and you just take the reciprocal of it. Well, remember I said that this point, wherever it's at one or negative one, there is no one right here, but there's a negative one. That's going to be a common point because the reciprocal of negative one is just negative one. This point right here has a, uh, a y-coordinate of negative 2, so reciprocal is going to be negative 1 half, or negative 1 over 2, like so. This one's down here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it's going to be 1 fifth, very, very close. And then it's going to be the same on the other side, okay? I'm happy with you only putting those points. The rest you can just estimate. And so we get a graph that looks like so, just kind of makes a little hump like that. So that's the first scenario. So whenever you have a quadratic that doesn't cross the x-axis like that, there's not going to be any vertical asymptotes, and the reciprocal function is just going to make a little hump like so. Okay, let's go on to example two. So this is going to be an example of one where there is one uh, vertical asymptote. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do what I did before. I'm going to go and graph this function. Okay, so I'll graph it. Oh, I got purple down here. No, no, no. I'll switch it back to red. 
So um, notice that this is in the y equals a onto x minus p all squared plus q. So make sure you don't forget that. Since there isn't a q, that means the graph isn't going to go up or down at all, uh, or the vertex isn't. But the vertex is going to move one in the positive direction. So I can put the vertex right here okay, on the x-axis. And then since it has a 3 in front, that means instead of going over 1, up 1, you're going to go over 1, up 3, and 3. And the next one would be at over 2, up 4 normally, but for this one, it would be up 12, and we can't fit that on there, although you can estimate where it would be. 12 would be approximately right there and right there. So make sure that you stay inside of that point. So ballpark, it'll look something like so. Okay. And so let's make a little note over here. The graph has a x intercept. Okay, notice that it just bounces right off of the x intercept right there at 1. So the vertical asymptote is x equals 1. All right, so I'll draw that vertical asymptote in right now. So that means you're going to have that line coming right here, going right down. The horizontal asymptote, I'm not even going to make a note for that one. We always know the horizontal asymptote is always right here. Okay. And the last thing I'd want you to do, I'll graph this uh, one in blue, is remember, wherever that graph has a height of 1, that's going to be a common point. So that means this is at 1 right there, and that's at 1 right there. It's going to go through that. And if you want to be accurate, all you do is you just take all these points. This point's at 1, 2, 3, up 3. Then that means it's going to be down at about a third right there and a third right there. And the rest you can just estimate. That's fine by me. So you're getting a kind of a unique shape right here. I'm going to make something that looks like so. And then the other side, it's going to look like that. And move infinitely down there. Okay. So that's the second scenario. Whenever you have a quadratic function that touches the x uh, axis at one point, it's going to make a, uh, the reciprocal function is going to look something like so. Okay, it's just going to have one vertical asymptote. And so the third scenario, you can probably imagine where we're heading with this one, uh, is going to be a quadratic, right, that crosses um, the x uh, axis at two points, and so as a result, it's going to make two vertical uh, asymptotes. So the first thing I'm going to go and do here is uh, first graph this function. So I will just make a little note, because this one's a little bit unique. Uh, first graph, y equals x minus 2 and x plus 2. And there's many different ways that you can go about graphing this. What I would want uh, you guys to possibly notice is that uh, first, first things first is that uh, these both have roots at 2 and negative 2. So you can even draw your dots right here at negative 2 and positive 2. The other thing that you might have noticed is that this is actually a difference of squares right there. If you were to FOIL this all out, multiply everything using the distributed property, you'd end up getting x squared minus 4. So you can go and graph it this way or graph it this way, either way that you like. Well, the second way, you'll also notice that this has a y-intercept right here at negative, where is it, negative 4, like so. And then since the leading coefficient has a 1 in front, you'd go over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4 takes you to that point that we already had. The next point would be over 1, 2, 3, up 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the next one I do not think you can fit on the graph. Right? It would be over 4, up 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have to go up a little bit more. That's not going to work. So in any event, we get something that looks like so. Okay. And what do we know? Well, we know wherever it crosses the x-axis, you're going to have a vertical asymptote. So my vertical asymptotes are at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. So with my black pen right here, maybe I'll make this a little bit thicker if I can. We're going to have my asymptote go right through there and right through this point. Okay, that's always the same. Wherever it crosses the x-axis, that means you're going to have a vertical asymptote there. Horizontal asymptote, as it's been with all the other ones, you're just going to have a line go right through at y equals 0 like that on the x-axis. Okay, and now let's go ahead and let's graph this uh, function. All right, so we'll graph the reciprocal function. What I want you to highlight again is highlight wherever the graph is at negative 1 or positive 1. So negative 1, I would notice it's at that point right there, that point right there. And you have to remember this is not completely accurate, right, because I've just sketched it. That point right there, and 
in that point right there, and the rest you can just sketch in. So this graph, right, because it has asymptotes on both sides, you're going to get that part that goes like so. This middle part right here, right, uh, this is kind of interesting, because if you take this point that's at uh, 1, 2, negative 3, this would be technically at negative 1 third, that one's at 4, it would be negative 1 4, so you get something that looks like this. You'll notice that inside these three asymptotes, you get kind of like a parabola. Then on the outside here, we get something that looks like so. Okay, so those are the three different possible scenarios that you can get. So remember, when it doesn't cross the, uh, when your parabola doesn't cross at all. So let's say you had a parabola that looks like that. That means there's not going to be any vertical uh, asymptotes. When you have a parabola that touches at just let's say one point, like right there, that's going to be one vertical asymptote. And then of course the one we just dealt with is when there is uh, two. Okay. Uh, example four, it's very similar to the last example that we did uh, on the previous lesson. They've given you the reciprocal function, and they want you to use the graph to go and, and figure out what the related quadratic function is. All right, so let's uh, mosey on down here. So what do I see that's going on here? Well, let's write all this stuff down. Uh, what do I see? I see I have a vertical asymptote right here. So that tells me, right, remember when there's one vertical asymptote, that, that means that the quadratic must bounce off of that point. So that means I must have a intercept right there. It must go through whatever this point is right there, because the one's got to be the same. All right, so we know the graph looks something like so, and something like so. So making notes of this, I can say since the graph has one vertical asymptote. The quadratic touches the x axis only once. Okay, and so that's what we had right there. So that's the sketch of that one. Now let's go to the next one. So next one, remember that we have two uh, vertical asymptotes going on there, right? So I'm going to draw dots right here and right here because we know that that's going to be a point where they um, they intersect. All right. In addition, uh, what else do I know? Well, I know whenever the graph is at a height of one or a negative one, then that means that that is going to be a point that's shared. So I would see right here, it's kind of tough to notice, but do you see how these axes are going up by one, two, so this point right here would be at one, like so, and one right there, and then a negative one would be this point like that, and this point like that. You can kind of see ballpark figure um, what this quadratic is going to look like, right? The quadratic is kind of coming up right here. It's kind of coming up like there. And then the rest you can just estimate. We'll say that it goes approximately through this point. Okay, because I just wanted to sketch. All right, so the notes for this one, uh, I mean, fairly straightforward, right? Uh, we had two asymptotes. And so when you have two asymptotes, that means you're going to have two roots. So that's where we got these two points right there. And then the rest that we can just kind of uh, sketch in. So in this lesson, we really uh, just kind of built on the one that we had learned uh, in 8.3 with linear functions. Uh, remember that uh, whenever a quadratic, maybe I'll illustrate the uh, three scenarios uh, right here. When you have a quadratic like so that doesn't cross at all, let's say you have something like that, then the reciprocal function is going to look kind of like that. It's just going to be a little hump. When you have a quadratic, oops, when you have a quadratic that let's say just bounces off like so, that's the one where the reciprocal function is going to just move away in that direction. And the last scenario that we had, the third one, is when we have a quadratic that let's say crosses like so, that's the one where it's a little bit funky, right? We have a graph that moves like so, like so, and like that. So the three different scenarios that we're going to uh, have to deal with. Um, you should be able to find out what the asymptotes are, fairly straightforward. Vertical asymptote is just wherever it crosses the uh, x-axis, so we'd have a vertical asymptote right there, and at those two points, horizontal asymptote is always on the x-axis. So that concludes this lesson and this uh, year. It's been a pleasure uh, working with you guys, and hopefully you've learned some stuff. Thanks.